morning, NBC. My name is Eliza, and I'd like to welcome you to our last summer series. I'd like to take this opportunity to acknowledge the Turrbal and Yagara people, who are the traditional custodians of the area where NBC is physically located, and pay respect to their elders past, present, and emerging. Well, as well as this being our last summer series, we know that this is also a time when school holidays are drawing to a close. So we look forward to our services returning to normal with our live stream next weekend, when we have a very special service planned. But today, we have one last speaker, Marlon, who has a great message to share with us today on gratitude. So why don't we start this morning by thanking God for all he has done. done so many things and we are so grateful for your presence with us. We want to be more grateful for, for you, for yourself than the things you do for us. And while we praise you for all the things we've done, we also want to praise you for who you are. And so God, today, as we hear your word, remind us of both of those things. Start with all the things that you've done for us that we can count our blessings and then help us move from there to remembering that you did these because you love us. The Father's only Son gave His life for us, lived, died, rose again on high so that You could bring us together with You again. Thank You for that, Lord. Thank You for that sacrifice. Thank You for that love. And as we worship You together today, may we learn more about what that looks like in our lives. We ask this in Jesus' Name. Amen. 
Well, good morning, NBC. My name is Marlon Andres Camacho, and I have the privilege to be here. I've been to going to this church for the last like six years that I've been in Australia, and I love it here. Um, what can I say? I've, I also got married here by Pastor Craig. He's been a huge blessing in my life, same as Donna and same with all the team. I'm just super excited to be here. Um, today's word that I've chosen, we go very basic. We're going primitive. We're going about gratitude. One of the most simple things that sometimes we don't realize how simple it is, but I truly believe, and I am a witness of that, that when we actually become grateful, when we, uh, when we achieve a sense in our hearts of being grateful for everything that God has done in our lives, we reach different levels. Our, our happiness, our, the way that we live our life just goes incremental. We get a different stage in our lives. And that's what I want to share today. So we're going to our first Bible reading, Colossians 3.15, that says, Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, since as members of one body you are called to peace, and be thankful. You see, a lot of us, like, we pretend and we... We are misguided sometimes by the way that society works, by the way that just we live our lives. We always push, 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 you know, take the kids to daycare, get, ready, get, ready, get them ready to bath, etc. You know, most of us don't even get a good night's sleep. And that's just the way that life is. But sometimes we need to take, a, take just a step back and realize all the things that God has done in our life. We have to just take a moment Take a breath and realize that God is good and God is doing amazing things in our life. But the devil is smart and he has a lot of weapons at his disposal and usually involves the brain. And sometimes the way that society works is that we need to rewire the brain. We need to create new alternatives for us to achieve different perspectives in our life. And I truly believe that the devil's main weapons for us to not realize the things that God has done in our life. Number one is the feeling of entitlement. And number two is the idea of taking everything for granted. You see, the idea of entitlement is just the basic idea that because we are from a certain, from, from a certain race or gender or whatever the case may be, that we deserve to be treated differently, that we deserve special status, that we deserve something greater just for the sake of being ourselves. And that is nothing far further from the truth because the Bible is clear that we don't deserve anything, but everything that we received is a gift from God because the Bible is clear that it wasn't because we were good that we were saved. It was by grace. It was nothing that we, that we could have done or anything like that. It was just a gift. Salvation was a gift. But sometimes we get tied and bottled in the idea that we deserve this. We deserve to be treated like this. We deserve to this. And we don't realize that we don't deserve anything. We are not entitled to anything. The only thing we're entitled to is death. That's the only thing we're entitled to. But everything that we have is actually from God's abundant love. And number two, it's the idea of taking everything for granted. Because we... We live in a pretty good country, and sometimes we don't realize what we have. And the sad truth is that we don't often realize what we have until it's gone. That's a famous saying that, you know, it's cliche, and you see it in movies, especially in, like, romantic movies, where you see the, I don't know, the spouse or the girlfriend leaving the room or, like, leaving the life of the other spouse or whatever the case may be, and they don't realize what they had the whole time. And when they do realize, it's already too, too late. The person has already gone, the, the person's gone, remarried, whatever the case may be. And how sad is it to realize how valuable something was once it's gone? You see, um, Alyssa and I, my wife Alyssa and I, we were blessed recently of bu to buying a house. And one of the things of buying your first home is that you don't realize all the obligations and responsibilities that come with it. So we lived in rent for a couple of years when we got, after we got married during COVID. And I was one of those tenants that you all, as soon as something didn't work, I would always phone my landlord, email, immediate. And um, it's funny because 
once we moved into the place, we had two gas bottles that we thought, you know, there was, it was going to be endless. We never thought of changing it until one day, it was a Thursday morning where I, where I was getting ready for work and it was starting to rain as well. And I realized that we ran out of gas. And guess what? And the gas had the water heater and the stove. And then I called L Gas, and they couldn't get a truck until I think it was Tuesday. So for more than five days, Alyssa and I didn't shower. No, we did, but <laughs> we did. But uh, she's gonna kill me when she sees this. But we did shower. It was just very, very unpleasant. And that's just a basic thing, you know. But we realized that we don't know what it, what we have until it's gone. You know, something so simple as just having, you know, a water heater, heated um, or having just a stove or anything like the basic things that we see in life, sometimes we don't realize what we have until it's gone. And that is very sad because it gets even more problematic. It gets even harder to understand when it comes to the harder things in life. And that usually involves your relationship with others your relationship with your mother, your relationship with your dad, your relationship with your children. All of those things, it's hard for, for, for everybody to realize that something is gone and that you can't take those moments back because you didn't cherish it. You weren't grateful at that point in time. And you can't change the past. You can only change the present. And I truly believe that God has something great, great for us. God has amazing plans in our life. God wants us to reach different levels. God wants us to, to live a happy and fulfilling life. And I believe that with these two tips, just basic tips, I feel like we can rewire our brain. We can think of different outcomes. We can achieve happiness. We can be grateful for what we have because remember, that being grateful isn't about what, what we have right now or what we will have in the future or what we had in the past. No, it's about, it's a feeling. It's, it's something that comes from the soul. It's the idea that we know that we have a loving God that gives us everything and that we don't deserve it, but we are good. And I believe that these two tips might help us. The first one is changing our vocabulary. I know it sounds basic, but often we, the way we speak says about what's in our heart. And sometimes we say the word, I have to. And that's automatic an obligation. That's something that you think it's a duty of yours. But in fact, what you don't realize, it's most often than not, it's actually a privilege that God has given you. For example, you don't have to pick up your kids from school. You get to pick up your kids from school. Because unfortunately, what happens is that a lot of parents right now are not picking up their kids from school. They're picking them up from a hospital or the morgue. They're picking up from a funeral home. That is the reality of some people. And we don't want to, we don't, it's not about a duty. It's a privilege that God has done for you. It's a privilege for you to go um, and spend some time with your wife. You don't have to go on dates with your wife or your girlfriend or whatever the case. You get to. Because right now in the world, there are, there are partners who are dying in their deathbed, wishing they had one more, one more time to go out, one more time to spend with their children. But they can't. It's too late. And that's the reality of it. That's what we have to be grateful for what we have right now. Not in the future or in five years or when, when X comes. No, it's right now that we have to achieve happiness. It's right now that we have to be grateful for. And number two, I truly believe that once you start focusing on the things that actually matter and the things that make you grateful, then you will automatically see all the blessings that God has done in your life. It's almost like you, you, you're looking for excuses to be grateful. And that's one of the most beautiful things you will ever be able to do. You are looking for things to be grateful. So now, you see, if you think about everything as a gift from God, now, even if it's the smallest thing, like having filtered water or having food, 
will be a huge blessing in your life. You'll have contentment in your heart. You know, it's, it's quite interesting when you see those kids in Africa with Samaritan's Purse and they realize and they open the little box, you know, every Christmas. And you can even send them a pair of socks and they'll be the happiest kids in the world. Why? Because they know that it's a gift. They know that if, even if it's small, it's something that they never took granted for. They, they, they wanted it. It's something that they are just super grateful that, you, that they did it, even if it's small. And that's the attitude that we have to live by. And I truly believe that if, if we just change our brains, we re rewire our brains, and we start looking for, for different ways to be grateful, I truly believe that we will achieve happiness because that is what God wants us to do. God wants us to be grateful because that's the least that we can do. He died on the cross for our sins. Not because we are good or because we're entitled or because we deserve it. No, no, no. It's because He did it from love. And the only thing that we can do is to be thankful and to be grateful for everything that He's done for our lives. Thank you very much.
so, so good with every breath that I am able, I will sing. great reminder about gratitude. I challenge you to find new ways to practice your gratitude this week. As a blessing today, I'd like to leave you with Psalm 100 verse 5. For the Lord is good. His loving kindness is everlasting and his faithfulness to all generations. Have a great week and we hope to see you in person next week or here on our live stream. Bye.